it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you what you can learn from these two very high-level singles players to help you win a lot more singles matches. Now, this video is courtesy of Matt Lynn on YouTube. Check out his channel. I put his link in the description below. Incredible college and pro content. So let's watch this point in its entirety, and then we'll diagram it. So that's a fun point to watch and learn from. Something right off the bat here that I thought was really interesting. Um, if we're looking at the Stanford player here. Uh, this is Axel. His, his eyes are looking over on the next court as the opponent is beginning his serve, Zhu. And so when Zhu is hitting his serve, uh, Geller's not even looking. And it's so funny. The toss is in the air and all of a sudden the Stanford player is like, whoops. He's looking forward. So it's actually interesting because this whole time, Geller's always been moving forward. I was watching a lot of points before I came along one that I really wanted to show you. And he was always moving forward and attacking the return uh, with his pre-movement and body movement forward. Well, he's so stationary here because he kind of got caught off, off guard. So definitely make sure that you're <laughs> watching the court and uh, watching your opponent and not getting distracted by what's going on around you. So I'm a big fan of returning down the middle in singles. I absolutely love that strategy, especially on a, f a first serve. You can see how far back he is behind the baseline. There's no reason for you to be going you know, to the corners or trying to be super aggressive. It gives you a ton of margin. It gives you a place that's safe, and then you can just recover back to the center of court, and that's exactly what he does. Hits this ball right down the middle of the court, and he recovers. Now, Zhu hits the ball right back down the middle. Geller's got his backhand, and he rips it right back up the middle again. But this is really important. When a ball comes slightly to your backhand, don't accept it as a backhand. So Geller's shot is going to go directly to Zhu's backhand. But Zhu is not going to let it be a backhand. He's going to move around it and make it a forehand. So watch. He moves around this ball and makes it his forehand. This is such a simple little detail, but it really makes a difference. Recreational players, so common, they, they accept whatever ball is given to them. If the ball comes to their backhand, they hit a backhand. That's not what you see high-level players do. High-level players are trying to figure out how to hit their strength. So if you notice that the ball comes to your backhand and you just hit a backhand, See if you can move around it and hit a forehand. Now, if the ball is over here, if Geller would have hit the ball way over here, well, Zhu is not going to come all the way over to make it a forehand. So I'm not talking about extreme movement here. I'm just talking about the ball comes to your backhand and you've got a strong forehand. Use your weapon. Use your strength. Now, this is where you see Zhu open up the court. And that that's when he's going to hit the ball deep into this corner. Now, he hits... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I caught... Got a little ahead of myself, but that's okay. Ball comes to the forehand. I really like, by the way, Axel's finish here. If you look at Geller's finish, the racket's up above his head. I'm a big fan of that type of finish. I don't think recreational players use this enough. It's a way of increasing upward angle, getting a lot more spin. Now, he actually hits this ball down the middle, I think a little bit too much. I think he just doesn't do much with this ball. I wish he would have done something with it. And since he's so far behind the baseline, it would have been nice if he would have just hit that ball cross court. Uh, I would not recommend him hitting down the line in this situation uh, because then it's going to be too easy for uh, Jude to get that ball and you know hit into the open court. So cross court would have been a great idea. He hits it back down the middle, so he's not really hurting Jude at all. And this is where Jude hits the ball super deep into... Geller's forehand side. Now, Geller's in trouble here. Now, I don't really blame Zhu for not coming in right now. And the reason is I kind of felt like it wasn't a great effort to get over to this ball. I think he kind of labored over to get this ball. He could have easily gone forward, angling himself up to get that ball on the rise as soon as it bounced. But he ended up actually moving slightly back, letting that ball kind of play him. 
Uh, and and so I actually don't blame you for expecting kind of the, uh, a, a better movement from Geller. Um, and, and so Geller hits the ball nice and high, which is what he should do. That buys him time to get into the court. Now, in this situation, this is called the 2-1 strategy. This is where you hit two shots into the same corner and then hit one into the opposite corner. So that was the first shot we just saw. So now watch Zoo. He's going to hit another ball deep into this corner. And the reason this works so effectively is because when you hit to the, to the corner first, you know that your opponent has to move this way. So you can hit behind your opponent and wrong foot them. So that was the first shot. Here's Geller recovering back. And now look, as Zhu is hitting this ball, Geller's moving left, right? He's actually kind of expecting an inside out forehand. And, and Geller gets caught this way. So it's not a bad idea to not always just hit into the open court, but actually wrong foot your opponent and hit where they used to be because you know they're going to be moving the opposite direction. Geller's moving this way, so Zhu ends up hitting the ball this way. That's when he really gets Geller in a lot of trouble, and all of a sudden he's got to go for that squash shot. Now, this is where Zhu instantly starts running forward. So if you look at Ju, look at him. He's coming forward. There's that little hop step. So he's doing a split step. And that's when Geller's hitting this slice shot. And that ball floats up perfectly to Ju. Now, here is where a lot of recreational players make a mistake when hitting volleys into the open court. You want to avoid volleying deep. So I don't want him volleying and hitting the ball deep into the court. Because it's going to be too short a distance for Geller to get that ball. Then he can pass down the line. So watch Zhu as he hits this volley. He gets the ball to land way up in the service box. When you are looking to win the point at the net, you're looking to angle off your volley, make the ball land in the service box. Then you can actually hit the ball off the court. Now, I think it's interesting here. That And again, if I were to play Geller, if I were to play this guy, I think I would win maybe three points. So I am definitely not saying that I could beat this guy. I think it's pretty interesting, though, at his level that he's moving straight across. You, he has to figure that this ball is going to be angled. And when it's going to be angled, his only chance is to run forward into the court to try to cut it off and basically run perpendicular to that to that line uh, uh, that the ball is going to travel. But he runs straight across, and he he actually, I think if he would have been running really hard initially and forward at an angle, he may, I don't know, but he may have had a play on that ball. But let's watch this point twice in its entirety and just look for the things that we talked about. <laughs> So if you go out and practice these strategy tips, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.